Obviously, I'm also in medals here as well, Mr. Prime Minister, so it's a similar topic as well. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to step over here and that's okay. My name is Brock Blaschek. I'm a retired corporal with the Princess Patricia Canadian Line Infantry out of here in Edmonton, 1st Battalion. I served, in a, uh, I served in the Canadian Armed Forces for seven years. Uh, I deployed in Afghanistan back in 2009 um, until April 3rd, where I was obviously severely wounded by a roadside bomb or improvised explosive. Um, as you can see, I've lost my left leg. I have 58% soft tissue loss and 88% nerve damage on my right leg. Um, back in August, 20, uh, August 24th, 2015, you made the promise, and I'll quote it here, no veteran will be forced to fight their own government for the support and compensation they have earned. Um, yet you are still currently in a legal battle with veterans regarding equal support and compensation to their peers. You know, as you can tell, you know, we have two sets of, two standard of veterans who fought in the same war. The ones prior to 2006 and the ones after 2006. There are two standards. One on the old Pension Act and one under this new lump sum or soon to be lifetime pension option. Um, you know, which by the way, Mr. Prime Minister, by what you just said here, I'm, through my own determination, I'm still at work, so technically, by what you said just a little while ago, I don't qualify for it. Um, so, sorry. Oh, so my question time. is... Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your courage. So my question is to you, Mr. Prime Minister, what veterans were you talking about? You know, because you have... ISIL or ISIS members coming into a reintegration program. You did a backdoor deal with Omar Qadar with not even stepping into the courtroom. You know, so again, my question is, what veterans were you talking about? Was the ones that fought for the freedoms and values that you so proudly boast about, or was it the ones who fought against? Because honestly, Mr. Prime Minister, I was prepared to be injured in the line of duty when I, went to, when I joined the military. Nobody forced me to join the military. I was prepared to be killed in action. What I wasn't prepared for, Mr. Prime Minister, is Canada have, turning its back on me. So which veteran was it that you were talking about? Thank you, sir. Thank you for your... Uh, passion and your strength and being here today to share this uh, justifiable frustration and anger with me and with all of us here. Uh, thank you for having the courage to stand here uh, and thank you for listening to my answer. On a couple of elements you brought up. First of all, uh, why are we still uh, fighting against certain uh, veterans groups in court? Uh, because uh, they are asking for more than we are able to give right now. Um, they are asking for more than we... Well, no. Hang on. You're asking... You're asking for honest answers. The old Veterans Charter involved lump sum payments and very little in the way of services. We have significantly invested in services, rehabilitation, support, uh, investments in training and support for caregivers and families that have gone a long way towards improving the quality of life and outcomes uh, for veterans. And we cannot return to the amount of money that was given before uh, without accounting for 
the money invested in services for veterans. And what I know from veterans I've spoken to is nobody wants, after having served their country with valor and honor uh, and sacrifice, to have their government say, here's your check, now don't bother us anymore. We need to support you through the course of your life with the things that you need, with the things that your family needs for it. And that is at the heart of uh, the new veterans approach that we have that you will see more details on in the budget coming forward. So I, I, I get that. Now, you also brought up a couple of other issues. Um, the issue of ISIL fighters and the issue of Omar Khadr. Uh, and if you like, I'll address both of those. Thank you. Um, there are about 60 people who have returned from places like Syria and other places in the Middle East suspected of having fought with Daesh or ISIL. Those folks are being monitored and watched and uh, accounted for by our intelligence agencies, by our security agencies. In fact, two of those people have been brought up on charges under the previous government, which according to some of you was a lot tougher on these sorts of things. There were also about 60 people under you know, surveillance or at least known to our intelligence agencies over many years. None of them had ever been brought up on charges, so we've at least moved forward a little bit on that. But at no point are we ever compromising our security or our, the strength of our communities uh, with Canadians who are returning from overseas. We are doing what we need to do to keep all Canadians safe. Now, on the issue of Omar Khadr, it's an issue that a lot of people are really frustrated about, and I count myself to be one of them. We made a significant payment to Omar Khadr. If we had continued to fight in court, it could have been 30 or 40 million dollars of payment and costs. Every single dollar of that is money that could or should have been spent on veterans, on school programs, on kids, on health, on any number of other things. Except that money serves a very clear purpose. And it's not about anything that Omar Khadr might have done or didn't do. It doesn't have anything to do with what they did. It has everything to do with what the Canadian government did or didn't do. The Canadian government, previous governments were complicit, were complicit in the violation of Omar Khadr's fundamental charter rights as a Canadian. Now, in Canada, we don't believe in torture, no matter what crimes you might have committed, what, no matter how unpopular or unpleasant you may be, it is not allowed and not right and not in keeping with Canadian values to allow anyone to be tortured. And yet, previous governments allowed a Canadian citizen to be tortured. And the fact, the fact, excuse me, the, 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 sorry, sir, 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 I'm in the middle of answering a question. Why are you disrespecting everyone here, including uh, this gentleman who has served and who's standing here asking a question? Yes, sir. Tell you what, I'll make you a deal. If you stop shouting at me, sir, I will give you the microphone and you can ask the question into the microphone. Is, will that make you happy, sir? No, I'll give you a microphone, sir. Yes, I'll, yeah, okay. <laughs> Sir, you're, you're shouting at me and interrupting me while I'm trying to answer this gentleman's question to get me to answer this gentleman's question. Okay, guys, respect him. Okay. So, the fact that we're angry about that 
payment to Omar Khadr is a good thing because no future government should ever think it's okay to allow someone to be tortured no matter how unpopular they were. And future governments will be held to account by Canadians because that is not a payment that ever should have had to be made and certainly we shouldn't have had to pay more. So thank you, sir, for your question. I sense we're going to have to agree to disagree on this one, but I think everyone here can agree uh, that we thank you for your service and are sorry for your sacrifice and wish you all the very best in your coming years.